What's going on everyone? Hope you all are having a great day. In the last video, we talked about why your outfits, and including mine, suck. And I tend to read all the comments that are left on these videos because that's the whole goal of mine is that I wanted to make it feel like we're more so having a conversation rather than it feeling like a YouTube video. But I seen one comment in particular that really inspired today's video because if you watched the last one, we talked briefly on the coexistence between music and fashion. And y'all know me, I could run in circles and go on long tangents that have nothing to do with the video at hand. So I I stopped myself from talking about it too long. I had some self-discipline there, but I did see one comment in the comment section that said, you know what, that will be a really good idea. Now, given that fashion and music are two separate art forms, at the end of the day, it's still art. And it's very necessary for me to attack the topic of art before we get into the conversation of fashion and music, because how could I tell you about how I see fashion and music if you don't know how I perceive art? So holistically, what is art? What does art mean to me? How can I express myself through art? Um, How can I categorize things around me as art? What is is art and one of the most famous sayings when it comes to this topic is that art lies within the eye of the beholder and in my case personally I find this to be very very accurate given that I'm a creator I'm an artist on all aspects in my world I perceive art to be life itself like I truly believe everything around us life in general is art whether it be the fluctuation of nature or aging in one skin uh, the way the body is shaped because everybody's body is shaped differently that's art whether it be your form of communicating because one person may talk with slang another person may be wittier than the other or comedy because comedy is art I believe art to not only be our environment but the environment that we surround ourselves in as well have you ever heard somebody say that they want to master an aesthetic as cringy as it can sound sometimes a Western cowboy's lifestyle in comparison to a farmer's lifestyle are two different worlds that's art now mind you art is subjective meaning that my definition of art can be different from yours because it's all perception based there's no technicality when it comes to what's deemed right or wrong or bad or good interpretation and perception has and still is an essential part of life you know of the human experience no matter the circumstance everyone has a belief system including me and you or a moral compass that ultimately influences the decisions that we make throughout our life or even the things that we put in favor of and you may not know it but we see examples of this every single day whether it's film painting architecture fashion and music even down to your spiritual and or religious beliefs it's all art and with all that being said how are two different forms of art and self-expression which are easily detectable as opposites like we already know music and fashion are complete opposites but how do they exist in the same world and how would one be significantly less without the other I'm super excited to dive in the conversation because again I have a lot of different angles and talking points and it's just gonna be a good one like it's gonna be real stimulating we gonna chop it up so let's get straight to it man how can fashion and music coexist in the same world so jumping right into it, I feel like it's the most appropriate if we do talk about the history of both art forms before like the impact and what they mean to us. So let's start with fashion. So many different cultures and ethnic groups have literally used fashion to define who they are and represent who they are as hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years have passed. And it's still seen today. Like it's so easy to spot two different walks of life just based off the clothes that they're wearing. And one thing that I thought about was when did this form of self-expression begin? Who decided to call it fashion and why is it called fashion? And last has clothing always been important to express oneself even back then? And when we discuss the importance of art forms, these are some good ass questions that need to be answered. See, fashion dates back literally to the beginning of time. Like seriously, the beginning of time. Honestly speaking, you can even date back to the Neanderthal era. Like yeah, of course they was Neanderthals, they couldn't talk, but they was still having fashion. Like they was putting that shit on. Now of course we don't have much evidence because that's damn near prehistoric times, but it was believed that the Neanderthals were able to hunt game and at least be able to make skins and furs drape over their body. And of course the execution wasn't all the way there. Like they wasn't making no damn designer Givenchy outfit, but they did what they could. And if you want to get even more technical, I told y'all, I'm a attacking this from so many different areas let's talk on a religious base now my goal here is to not push religion on you because who am i to do that but the topic of fashion from a religious standpoint on how it started is somewhat interesting so if you read the bible and believe in god it said that adam and eve which were the first humans on earth ate the forbidden fruit and was then shamed of all including nakedness meaning that before they ate the fruit they weren't really aware that they were naked but then after they ate the forbidden fruit god told them like now you're naked and they became shameful and as the story of genesis continues it's believed that adam and eve then used fig leaves to cover up their genitals hmm. so they use leaves to cover up their private parts even though it's not a full outfit, is that still considered fashion? So you're telling me that the history of fashion, no matter if you believe in science or religion, 
still ends up the same answer. It started when we got here. The same thing can be applied when we're referring to music. The history of music dates back to the beginning of time as well, if and only we're speaking from a technical standpoint. And of course, just like fashion, we have cultural development of music as well, whether it be from African tribes, Native American tribes, people over in Asia, all cultures have their own definition of what they perceive music to be. And oddly enough with these cultures, it's the same way with clothes. Hmm. I'm fired up right now and I want to keep attacking this from so many different angles. So technically music began before then like in the prehistoric times as well. If we get to the root or base definition of what music actually is, it's simply just the self-expression through various sounds. And of course, nowadays we include rhythm, chord progression, song structure, hell, even lyrics, but it really all starts with just sound, right? In the prehistoric times before language, humans used sound to communicate. Whether it be fear or joy, we all went, ah! Think about it, a caveman couldn't say, damn, I'm so excited, I just made a fire. When they felt excitement or joy, they would go, ah! And bang on our chest and do all this weird dumb shit. And I'm not gonna jump the gun and say that it's music, but remember, there's two things about music that we all know. Of course, it's the self-expression through various sounds and going, ah! Are various sounds, and it's also emotional because they feel excitement that they created this fire. So is it there for music? And I know someone watching this video is gonna use the argument that just because it's sound or someone talking doesn't mean it's music. That was a thought that I had like, damn, is it really music? It's just a dude talking. But then I also attacked it from this angle, which makes me somewhat debunk my own question was, What's acapella then? The style of acapella to us is still considered music, but it's honestly no different from the caveman. It's just with the caveman, we didn't know what the person was saying. And just like fashion, this art form itself began to evolve as well. Humans began to creatively use the environment around them to their advantage, just like they did with fashion to create sounds and connect with others. And that my friends is how instruments became a thing. Instruments are literally just devices created by us that make sounds. Back then, caveman probably had rocks and was banging on different surfaces and if you do that enough times that can be considered music you know sound is coming out of that the same ideas could apply with a stick say a caveman was in the woods and he picked up a stick and then hit it on a big slab of wood isn't that technically a drum if you see what i'm getting at both of these art forms basically have the same exact upbringing so aside from the historical similarities now let's get into the emotional connection and the cultural connection that it's had on all of us let me ask you this when you put on your favorite outfit don't you feel a sense of bliss or maybe a boost in your aura of confidence everyone should have said yes because we all for the most part have a favorite hoodie or a favorite t-shirt and we put clothes on our back every single day so you definitely have a favorite you probably just don't know what it is if you said no and the same exact feeling could be made with music in my world i see and use music somewhat as a mood amplifier think of it this way when you're happy and you play your favorite upbeat tempo song you feel even happier whereas speaking from experience if you're feeling blue um in my case i would play like adele or or there's a, a composer her name's anna von hoswolf that i really love and i'll play them and i feel Worse than I felt before I played them. Do you see the emotional correlation between music and fashion? Let's dive a little bit deeper. Of course, there's a lot of outfits out there that can speak volumes just based off the cut and the proportion, but most importantly, with everyday wear, most of it involves color. No matter the circumstance, color always speaks volume always and if we're speaking in terms of fashion we already know that bright colors can indicate a happy mood or dark colors can indicate a sad mood but let's talk about music have you ever heard a song and indicated a color with it and if you're not sonically aware i could see where you may not understand where i'm coming from so definitely listen to what i have to say because this is something that can change your entire perception on how you listen and take in music so the best example i can give is going to be an exercise that i'm going to put together right now on the screen using shameless plug but my song motive i'm going to play a 15 snake and sip of the song while also putting two different colors on the screen and after the exercise the entire goal here is to get you to understand how colors and music are in one relationship and you can see colors through the sonics Any saying we get, we don't know him. Get a bad, no, I can lose focus. All these drugs, cause I'm feeling broken. Try to give you my love and you notice. Say you love me, but I never notice. My emotions, I cannot control it. If no nigga, I don't got a pawn. Fucking with me is the motion. Any saying we get, we don't know him. Get a bad, no, I can lose focus. All these drugs, cause I'm feeling broken. Try to give you my love and you notice. Say you love me, but I never notice. My emotions, I cannot control it. If no nigga, I don't got a pawn.
Now, if you think like me, you can definitely tell that the pink resonates with the song much more. Whenever you hear an upbeat, fun song, you're not thinking about the color brown. That's nasty. You think about pink, bright yellow, maybe a bright red. Red seems a little aggressive. I'm not too sure if red is like happy, but yeah, you definitely think about bright yellows and things like pink. And mind you, this is all being said because clothing does the same exact thing. Music and clothing are in the same world. Quick shameless plug, but I'm working on my first body of work when it comes to music, my first album ever called Hotel Heartbreak. I don't wanna dive too deep into the conceptual value of the project just yet, but just based off the title, you could definitely tell that it's not gonna be an upbeat album, it's gonna be Heartbreak. Might I add though, it is conceptually deeper than just your normal Heartbreak albums. Like those are cliche, so I attacked it at a very creative manner that I think a lot of y'all will enjoy. But I say that to say this, my whole goal is to evoke emotion and let you feel what I'm feeling on the inside side when you listen to the music and the overall experience. So before the music drops over on my Instagram, I'm going to be releasing a series of musical snippets as well as short films that all involve sort of the same aesthetic. And that's mostly done not only with the videography, of course, but the outfit of choice. But beyond me, even on a deeper level, let me ask you this. When you see someone wearing a tie-dye shirt and bell-bottom jeans, don't you think of the 1970s? Whereas if you see someone wearing an oversized t-shirt and some oversized jeans and sneakers, wouldn't you think of the 1990s or early 2000s? Now, if I was to play Abbey Road by the Beatles or Ready to Die by Biggie, wouldn't you think of the same exact things? So think about it this way. Not only was fashion and music brought up in the same historical manner, but they also defined the times just like each other. And remember, I told you, we gonna get even deeper than that. So let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about what makes an era an era? And honestly, you don't even have to be a crazy music guru to answer this question because we all know that everything in life comes with an era. Think about it. We have the Victorian era. We have the Vikings era. We have the Renaissance era. And we can also include that the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and even the 2010s are all eras in their own respect. So it really doesn't take rocket science to understand this. And mind you, I'm not even speaking from a musical standpoint. Everything has an era. Remember, I said life is art. But back to Sonics, we know that all musical artists have eras. Whether it be Michael Jackson's Thriller era or David Bowie's Aladdin Sane, Tower the Creator Igor, Kanye West's 808 and Heartbreak, shit, even Cash K's Hotel Heartbreak. Really think about it. Michael Jackson's Red Coat. David Bowie's exotic fashion sense and makeup. Tyler the Creator's blonde wig and pink suit. Kanye West's shutter shades and gray tux, or Cash K's black suit and shades. But you remember these eras not only because of the Sonics, but the things that coexisted with it, which was the fashion. Like, don't get me wrong, I love music to death and I love fashion to death, but both of them coexist so well that I wouldn't enjoy them as much as I did without one of them. You know, like both of them play a huge role in my life. Seeing videos of Kanye West in his Yeezus era performing with a black mask and a full Margiela outfit brings the entire album to life. It literally lifts the concept and ethos of Yeezus to a whole nother world. And if I wasn't able to see these outfits in this costume design as far as the performances go, yeah, of course, when I listen to Yeezus, I'd be like, oh yeah, Kanye's mad. He's very much attacking this album in an aggressive manner, but it wouldn't hit the same. If I were to listen to Playboy Cardi's whole lot of red, but didn't get any of the visuals or outfits or aesthetics that went along with the album, I don't think I'll appreciate it as much. Of course, the fusion of punk rock culture, the vocal inflections, and the aesthetics fused with like the hard trap beats and things that hip hop is somewhat known for, it's still evident, of course. But the outfits that we got during that era, the makeup that we got, the costume design when Cardi's on stage, it makes the album come to life. It makes the vampire that Cardi claims to be feel believable. It makes the music cinematic. It makes the music genuine, authentic. It makes the music timeless. And now every single time I listen to a whole lot of red, I think of four things. Christmas, vampires, red hair, and Rick Owens. And of course, without the music, none of that's there. But most importantly, the base of it is fashion. Why did Playboy Cardi feel entitled to consider himself a vampire? Because of the clothes that he was wearing, the lifestyle that he had. The clothes play a big part of who you are. Ultimately, music and fashion are two art forms of self-expression and I couldn't be more grateful. Whenever I feel a certain way in terms of my mindset or emotions, music and fashion both embrace that. Fashion allows me to embody what is going on in my mind without saying a word. Whereas if I wanna embrace that same emotion, but instead using words, I can make music. And given all of these things that I pay attention to when it comes to art and self-expression, that's the main goal for me as far as my artistry goes in my career. When it comes to my music, as previously mentioned, I'm working on an album called Hotel Heartbreak. I wanted to attack this album conceptually just like I attacked this video from so many different areas and viewpoints where 
it's able to be interpreted so many different ways. As you can tell, I'm an emotional person. I'm a very vulnerable person, and I just had to accept that. And my music is a reflection of that. You know, I don't talk about I don't talk about having the most women, having the most money, all these expensive cars. Like I usually talk about how I'm feeling, which is emotion based. And again, some people don't want to hear that, which I completely understand. But the ones that do, and the ones that are vulnerable or want to be vulnerable but don't know how to speak up or express themselves, they listen to me and they relate so much on a deeper level and that's all I ever wanted. That's why I always say if you do enjoy my vibe of these videos and you want to connect with me on a personal level, definitely check out my other channel, my vlog channel, Cash K Vlogs, because the things that I'm talking about on this album are basically what you're seeing in those videos just in a more vulnerable and creative manner and i will say it is a bit risky for the first project uh because obviously you want to have as much of a good first impression as you can and most artists don't really go the conceptual route when it comes to a body of work they usually go for what's gonna hit the most but i trust myself enough to get my music out to the right ears where they can relate to me so if i get a million plays i'll be extremely grateful but most importantly like i just want to create experience for the ones that relate to me and they'll never forget it so to wrap things up yes music and fashion coexist in in the same world given that they're opposite forms of self-expression and that's the coolest part about it because it creates an experience for the listener the consumer where if they have this favorite outfit they can throw in their favorite song with that outfit and now you've just created some extremely blissful experience that you'll never forget and that's also one thing that i want to go for as well when it comes to my album shameless plug is that when you see me wearing this black suit and shades you know that's the hotel heartbreak era so whenever this era is over with and i'm on to the next era um you can appreciate the hotel heartbreak and you know exactly what came with that and we can gear towards the next one so it's cool man it's super cool if you guys enjoy my vibe and you want to connect with me on a personal level first link down in the comments and the description i do have a personal vlog channel definitely check it out before you subscribe and see what the content's like to see if it resonates with you and then if you obviously like it feel free to subscribe also check out my instagram as i post a lot of outfits uh, we talked about that how fashion evokes emotion also that's where the new music snippets will be going as well as like short films and things that i'm working on that are attached to the album and last but not least be sure to check out my spotify right now we're currently sitting at 22,000 monthly listeners and i don't really have a specific goal um, I really just want to get the body of work out, but once we hit them 100Ks, 200Ks, 300Ks, like, it's going to be up out of here, man. So, definitely check out my Spotify, link down in the description as well. And yeah, let's just continue to have fun, continue to spread love, and, and be the best version of ourselves. I love you all. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.